All right, before we begin video number nine, I just want to uh, bring up something that I've noticed about myself uh, when I make videos. Sometimes I make the mistake of um, speaking in generalities, which usually isn't completely correct. For example, like to say that all Utahns believe in Mormonism or to say that all Catholics believe in, or I mean all Italians believe in Catholicism or all Southern Baptists are in the southern states, you know. Um, generalities like that obviously aren't completely true. Not everybody from Utah is a Mormon. Not everybody from Italy is a Catholic. Not everybody in the southern states is a Southern Baptist, you know. So um, that's a bad habit I'm trying to break. Um, but, you know, if you're watching these videos and I say, you know, the Cherokee believe in this, the Potawatomi believe in this, the Cheyenne believe in this, or, or, or whatever. Um, just remember that I'm not saying that all of these people believe in this and all of these people believe in that. Um, you know, speaking in generalities, it's a, it's a bad habit that I sometimes catch myself doing. Um, it's something that I think most people do and we just don't think about it. So, just want to get that out there. Anyways, enjoy the video number nine. Part nine, a heavenly God visiting and teaching the ancient Native Americans. His most common general names among many Native tribes throughout North, Central, and South America and the Pacific Islands are the Healer and the Prophet. He is often described as having pale skin, greenish-gray eyes that changed like the sea, and hair that shined in the sun like copper. He wore a white robe and golden sandals, and he had cross marks in the palms of his hands. There's a book called He Walked the Americas by a woman named L. Taylor Hansen. It was published in 1963 after she'd spent about 30 years learning from various native tribes of North, Central, and South America and the Pacific Islands. The legends in her book are directly from various tribes from all of these areas. I'm going to start off by reading from page 48 here. The Prophet Tells of His Birth The sandals of the Prophet carried him to a city whose name has vanished in the dust of other ages. Today, the name of Oklahoma, translated from the native language, means the land of the red man. Here was a large Pont city whose crests showed an interesting history, and to this metropolis came the healer. Here, he once more changed the temples, chose from the priesthood his twelve disciples, and lectured to all the people. Here, he was asked by his priesthood to speak to them of his childhood and in some of the legends we have some interesting comments. Here he told them he was born across the ocean, in a land where all men were bearded. In this land he was born of a virgin on a night when a bright star came out of the heavens and stood over his city. Here, too, the heavens opened, and down came winged beings singing chants of exquisite beauty. When the University of Oklahoma was digging in the Spyro Mound, much pottery was discovered, which showed winged beings singing. And here was also the hand with the cross through the palm, about which the professors were deeply puzzled, and still have no explanation as they stare at these things in their museums. About the campfires of the ancients, the tales of the prophet are secret. For the benefit of their youth, they chant the stories of long ages ago, when they lived in cities, and of a sainted healer who came and lived among them. To them, he was known as Jesus, the dawn god. And then I'm going to skip over to pages 53 through 54. Random memories. These are a series of memories, a word or two dropped in passing. The Pawnee remember the prophet who came and taught them of his father, the mighty holy of the heavens. He told them not to forsake his precepts. And when they returned again to warfare, they thought often of his predictions, of how war but breeds more carnage. Even then, he foretold the coming of white man. The Pawnee remember him as Paruxti and his father as Tirawa. They know that they disobeyed him and they pray to him in anguish. 
The Algonquin of the Eastern Seaboard, when asked how they got their name for the Dawn Light, say that it was the name of the Pale One. They would not give him their own name as he'd asked them, for to him names meant nothing, and he allowed each tribe to name him. They asked instead his name in childhood when he lived across the ocean. The name he gave them was a strange one, hard to say in their liquid language, so today they try hard to say it, Jesus, God of the Dawn Light. The Algonquin of the Great Lakes remember well the Pale Great Master. The Chippewa say he gave them many medicine lodges, whose signs and symbols are secret, fashioned from those across the ocean. And even today they hold this secret knowledge. Even the proud Dakota, they of the Turtle Totem, leading north the line of serpents in their age-old migration, recall the long-lost adoration, the sacred name of the pale-faced healer. It was long ago that we knew him. He gave to us our rite of baptism, many of our lodges, and our rites of purification. When he came to us, the days were warmer. The sun cast down shorter shadows. Well do we remember how he foretold the coming of white man and other predictions. We have backslid from his teachings, but to him we dance the sun dance. We remember great Wakona well. The entire book is like this. I highly recommend you get it. Now, if you've been following my video series since part one, you'll know well by now that I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who believes that the Book of Mormon took place in North America, particularly in the eastern half, and that anciently its landmass looked fairly different than it does today, which I'll explain more about when I make part 10. Yet this book, He Walked the Americas, contains native legends of Jesus Christ from not only North America, but Central and South America, and the Pacific Islands as well. And I have no problem with that. And here's why. In John chapter 10 in the Bible, Jesus Christ tells the Jews, Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, and that they shall hear my voice. Then in 3 Nephi chapters 15 and 16 in the Book of Mormon, after Jesus' resurrection, he visits the Nephites in ancient America and tells them that they are the other sheep whom he was talking about. And then he goes on to tell the Nephites that, I have other sheep which are not of this land, neither of the land of Jerusalem, neither in any parts of that land round about whither I have been to minister. And he says that, I shall go unto them and that they shall hear my voice. Now I've also heard legends of a person like Jesus Christ in India, China, Japan, and places like that. And the book He Walked the Americas tells of how Jesus Christ sailed with people in a boat from the west to the Pacific Islands, which means he was sailing eastward from the Indian Ocean. And after he visited the Pacific Islands, he sailed with the people eastward to South America, and visited tribes all the way up South and Central and North America, and then sailed eastward into the Atlantic Ocean. He told all of the tribes he visited that one day he would come to visit them again, which is why, much later in the future, a lot of tribes throughout the Americas and Pacific Islands first thought that he was among the Europeans when they first arrived. But sadly, they soon found out that the Europeans were hostile and came to conquer their lands. Now, some people might think that because Jesus visited these tribes by boat and on foot as a man would, that all of this traveling must have taken place before his ministry in Jerusalem, since nothing is mentioned in the Bible about Jesus in his teens and twenties. But I personally think that all of this traveling was after his resurrection, because the legends mention that he had scars in his hands and that the people in his homeland had rejected him. And also, he told the Nephites that he was going to visit other sheep in lands where he had not yet been to minister. Now I want to share some of the tribal names for Jesus Christ mentioned in He Walked the Americas. Several of the native legends in the book talk about how the healer would ask each tribe he visited to give him a name, which is why his name is often different from tribe to tribe. I'll try to pronounce the names that are in native languages as best I can, but I'm sure I'll say some of them wrong. Anyway, all of the names are beautiful names, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to stick with names from North American tribes. 
However, I do want to mention one cool name from Panuco, Mexico, which is hurricane, meaning the great storm, and is where we get the word hurricane from. The people called him hurricane because he stopped a hurricane and calmed the ocean. And from that time, in many languages, one of his names was the Lord of Wind and Water. The Pond tribe's word for the Lord of Wind and Water is Isikowa. The Pond tribe also called him Chizus, as mentioned earlier, because they wanted to know his name from his homeland. They also called him the God of the Dawn Light and the Pale One. The Chippewa also call him the Lord of Wind and Water. Other names they call him are the Miracle Worker, the Pale God, the Sacred One, and Wisako, which means the Lord of Wind. The Seneca tribe call him Hiawasa, which means he from afar off, and is not to be confused with the man Hiawatha, who was a great man among them who lived much later after Hiawasa had visited them. The Seneca also call him the Dawn God and East Star Man. The Cheyenne call him the Morning Star, which is also the symbol on their flag. The Choctaw call him Imishi, which means the Wind God. The Dakota call him Great Wicoma, which means the Lord of Wind and Water. They also call him the Fair God and Great Wakona, but I'm not sure what that means. I've found similar words to it that mean Great Spirit or Great Creator. The Pawnee call him Paruxti, which means the messenger of the Great Spirit, who is his father, whom they call Tirawa, which means the Mighty Holy of the Heavens. Paruxti is associated with thunder, lightning, clouds, and wind. And many native tribes call his father the Great Spirit and Creator. And the Yakima tribe call him Tacoma, which is another word you're probably familiar with. Tacoma and Yakima are both names of cities in the state of Washington. And Mount Rainier in Washington, which is a recent American name, is actually called Mount Tacoma by the Yakima tribe in honor of him. Again, all the names are beautiful, but I find the names the God of the Dawn Light, the Dawn God, East Star Man, and the Morning Star particularly interesting. Because in 3 Nephi chapter 11 of the Book of Mormon, instead of coming by boat or by foot, Jesus Christ comes to the Nephites in the morning as a bright star coming down from the sky. Anyway, I love hearing legends that relate to Jesus Christ in many cultures throughout the world. We can read of him in the Bible, which took place in ancient Israel and the surrounding Mediterranean area. We can read of him in the Book of Mormon, which took place in ancient America, which I personally believe was the eastern half of North America. But we can also search for legends of him throughout the entire world, some of which are in the book He Walked the Americas. And the woman who wrote this book, L. Taylor Hansen, she wasn't a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yet she picked up on all of these legends during her time that she spent with Native Americans for about 30 years. And I heard that sometime later after this book was released in 1963, that she did hear about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and ended up joining. But I'm not sure about that. I'd have to uh, do some more looking into that. Anyway, this isn't a video telling you to join my church. It's just a video to help people to know that Jesus Christ really did visit people all over the world. And he loves every culture of people all over the world.